Hi, I'm Katie Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. And today we're celebrating Independence Day. Well, actually, tomorrow is really Independence Day. Tomorrow is the 4th of July. But this is Independence Day weekend. So happy 4th of July to everybody out there. May the Lord bless you richly. Our message this morning is entitled, The Truth Will Set You Free. And our, our scripture is taken from John chapter 8, verse 31 through 36. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Jesus said, You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Many people have the truth, but yet they are still not free. They're still bound up by past hurts. They're still shackled to past sins. They're still imprisoned by social expectations and imprisoned by social pressures. They're being beguiled by society, fighting for things that has nothing to do with them at all. Bob Marley has a song called Redemption Song. In it he says, Emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. It is us who must let our, our, ourselves be freed by the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. If you know the truth, the truth will set you free if you let it. I saw a young man today wearing a, a, a t-shirt, or it actually was yesterday, he was wearing a t-shirt. It said, live your own truth. That kind of truth will keep you bound up. It will keep you imprisoned because there's only one truth. That's God's truth. Live that truth and that truth will set you free. Truth is not relative. Jesus said in verse 32, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Corey Ten Boom was put in prison for hiding Jews from the Nazis during World War II. Although she was imprisoned, she was free because she knew the truth of God. She was free in her own mind. She was free in her own spirit and no one could take that away from her. Although they locked her up behind bars, they could not keep her imprisoned in her mind. She was free because she knew the word of God. This life is only a temporary state, a qualifying run, if you will. Eternity, on the other hand, is forever. And forever is a very, very long time. And that was what Corey Ten Boom was working for, eternity. She was not concerned about getting even. It is God who said that he will repay. He said, vengeance is mine. Tomorrow is 4th of July, 2022. It is a day we celebrate Independence Day here in America. Let us celebrate that our flag still stands for freedom. Freedom to worship, freedom of speech, freedom to believe whatever you want to believe, freedom to go where you want to go and do what you want to do. Freedom to be who you want to be and to achieve what you want to achieve. Do not take it for granted because freedom is not, is never ever free. Right now, you are unshackled, so praise the Lord. But communism is slowly creeping its slimy way into our country and those countries of the world. The whole world is being seduced by this spirit. Australia, for instance, has a commercial that says this.
You will own nothing and you will be happy. If there is such joy in owning nothing, why are they so desperately trying to own everything? What I'm saying here is, we got our independence at a high cost. Why sell it so cheaply now? Verse 32, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The people of Jesus' day could not understand that concept. And it seems like the people of today cannot understand it either. They're having difficulty with that concept. Look at the reply to Jesus' statement. Verse 33. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? You wonder why the Jews are so successful? Consider their answer to Jesus. We have never been enslaved to anyone. I want to remind you that at the time of this saying, those same people were under Roman occupation. They were not self-governed. They were enslaved in Egypt for 400 years before that, or their ancestors were. The Assyrians had conquered and dispersed them out of the, the, the northern kingdom. And Nebuchadnezzar and his army, the, the Babylonian army, they conquered the southern kingdom and they dispersed that kingdom. So these Israelites, their ancestors, were without a country for over 70 years. Yet, they were saying, we have never been enslaved. Not only that, but during the time of the judges, before Israel had a king, there were always these Israelites' ancestors. They were always oppressed by some other country because of their idolatry. Yet, they answered Jesus, we are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. They did not let their past keep them down. That was their forefathers who were enslaved, not them. They were free men. They were free women. They did not let other people define who they were or put a label on them or limit their success. Nowadays, politicians can go around declaring that you're not a certain color if you don't vote for them and feel that it's okay, that it's all right to say that. And the amazing thing is, people agree. And no one seems to be offended about it. That should have been an outrage, but it wasn't. Because social media and the fake news made it the norm. We have NFL football stars claiming that they are kept down, that they are mistreated, and that they cannot get ahead. But yet, they are earning millions of dollars as spokespersons for Nike, who has a history of their shoes being produced by child slave labor. What they're doing is programming and defining who people are and limiting what they can do by mentally enslaving them. Several years ago, in the Cayman Islands, the Cayman Islands has a huge celebration called Pirates Week. 11 days of celebrating the Cayman Islands pirate heritage. The days are filled with reliving the, the, the Caymanian heritage and traditional cooking, traditional foods, which is good. And the nights are filled with drinking and debauchery, which is bad. I admit, in my heathen days, I celebrated and enjoyed Pirate's Week, just like I celebrated and enjoyed Mardi Gras in New Orleans. One night, I was dressed like a pirate with my pirate's clothes on, my boots, even an eye patch and a sword. I was standing talking with some friends when a woman passed by. I drew out my sword and uh, I wanted to have a sword fight with her and she did not react the way that I thought she would. She began to tell me off and tell me how I was trying to bring back slavery and how me and my family had her family enslaved. I was shocked. I had never experienced that in the Cayman Islands before. Besides, never have my family owned slaves. We do not have a history of owning slaves. For all she knows, my family could have been enslaved themselves. 
but she was enslaved mentally. She let the programming of those who really want to enslave her, the financiers of the world, keep her shackled to a long past hurt that is not hers today. Let us have this mindset about us. We are children of the Most High God. We have never been enslaved to anyone, not even to the devil, because once you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you are no longer the same. You are no longer that same person. The old has passed away and the new has come and you are now a new creation in Christ. Therefore, if the old has passed away and the new has come, you are not a sinner saved by grace. You are now a saint in the Lord, the Lord God Most High. We cannot and we are not defined by our past. Nowhere in scripture does Paul or Peter or any of the other writers of the gospel refer to any of the Christians as sinners saved by grace. They refer to them as saints, men of God, women of God, children of the Lord Most High. We're no longer who we were. We are who God says that we are. We're saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, and Jesus on our minds. We will not let God hated men, egotistical maniacs tell us that and keep us shackled to a memory that is not ours. We are free and we live in the land of the free. In other words, we have our independence. We have our freedom. Let us not let them divide us and conquer us. Even you who live in other countries, come together and declare your own independence. Do not let your politicians steal your freedoms away from you. This is the nature of their game. Keep them ignorant. Keep them fighting amongst themselves. Keep them divided. Keep them conquered. There's a lot of celebrating here in the US this weekend. But what are we really celebrating? What is the 4th of July really about? This is some of the people's answers to that question. Something started this whole 4th of July celebration. What was it? Uh, I'm guessing like winning over freedom in America, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> I'm not sure. Then you're not sure? <laughs> I'm not sure. It started because we broke away from a certain country, right? Yeah. Right. What country was that? <laughs> I gotta go, man. You don't know. Ready for the 4th of July? Yeah, we are. What country did we declare independence from? America. Oh, uh, man, I forgot, man. What's that? I forgot. You forgot? Yeah. Okay. When Lee Harvey Oswald and Karl Marx signed the Declaration of Independence to start this great country, what year was that? I'm assuming the 1800s. You're just assuming. Okay. Yeah, Anything I don't else? know. I'm not a history person. Uh, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember, honestly. No. No. Could you guess? Um, can I guess? Maybe 1815? Does that sound right? Maybe? No. 14 something? It sounds I don't know. wrong. <laughs> it is wrong. Yeah, so are um, you going to tell me? Other than Karl Marx and John Wilkes Booth, who are some of the other founding fathers that are credited with? starting this great country? Uh, Benjamin Franklin, um, Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> right? No, no, he was way, way out. Okay, well, Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> okay, you got one. <laughs> when Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh signed the Declaration of Independence, what year was that? I don't know. Did you go to history class? Yeah, and I aced it, but I don't remember most don't stuff. Remember. It's like, Obviously aced it. Because like in school, like you memorize it, but you don't really like memorize None it None of that stuff's really important. No. no. They did not even know why they were celebrating the 4th of July. They did not know who we won our independence from. The nature of their game, one more time. Keep them ignorant. Keep them fighting amongst themselves. Keep them divided, keep them conquered. So if you don't know, here it is. The United States of America declared independence from England on July the 4th, 1776. Although the War of Independence did not end until 1783. 
George Washington is considered a founding father of the United States, but he did not sign the Declaration of Independence. He was in, in New York in the war, fighting the War of Independence. He was defending New York at the signing of the Declaration of Independence. These are five of the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence. Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, John Penn, John Hancock. Pretty much, if your name was John, you were expected to sign the Declaration of Independence. John Adams called it the most memorable epoch in the history of America. And in his impassioned speech to Congress on July the 1st, he said, and I quote, we shall make this a glorious and immortal day when we are in our graves. Our children will honor it. They will celebrate it with thanksgiving, with festivity, with bonfires and illuminations. That is fireworks. On its annual return, they will shed tears, opiumous, gushing tears, not of subjection and slavery, not agony and distress, but of exaltation, of gratitude, and of joy. Have we become a people of ungrateful hearts, a people who snub our noses at what others have put their lives on the line to give us? Have we so quickly forgotten the good we have enjoyed at someone else's expense? Here is another date of independence which we have taken for granted, which we have snubbed our noses at, which we've, we have forgotten. It's Easter. The day Christ bought our true freedom. The day he offered us real independence. The contemporary Christian rock pop music band says, Whiteheart sings a song, Independence Day. Here's a few lines of their lyrics. And I quote, Hear the myth of modern man, you're the god of your own land. They call you weak, a spineless fool. Say you've given up your right to rule. But I have been to the land of me, and I know I was never free. Freedom came when I gave it all away. That's why I call it Independence Day. Jesus has purchased our freedom for us. All we have to do is to accept it. Receive him who gives generously. Jesus' own words in John chapter 8 verse 30, uh, 36 says, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. My question this morning is, have you been set free? Are you free from mental slavery? Have you declared independence from the slavery of sin? If you haven't, what better time than now? What better time than this Independence Day weekend during all the celebrations, during all the fireworks? Will you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior today? Will you declare your independence over sin? If you will, here's how. Just say this prayer with me and mean it with your heart. Father, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me, Lord and help me to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. It's just a simple prayer, a prayer asking for forgiveness, a prayer accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you pray that prayer, and if you believe it, believe that Jesus can forgive you and has forgiven you. You're a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. You have become free. Indeed, because the Son has just set you free. What you need to do now is get yourself a Bible and read your Bible every single day. Get a highlighter and memorize. Highlight those verses and memorize those verses. Find a Bible believing church. Not one of those, those progressive churches. Not one of those churches who, who, who you can live any way that you want. But the, a church that believes that thus saith the Lord. There's a right way and there's a wrong way to live. Join that church. Be discipled in that church. And when Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is that you should be doing. And he'll take you to be with him. That where he is, there you'll be forever and ever and ever. Enjoy.
peace, harmony. No more tears. No more sad goodbyes. But just peace and joy. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy 4th of July to everybody. May the Lord bless you richly. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.